Back with our talk around Susan. Don made the point early on in our discussion that we will have a new commissioner in District 1. Evelyn Gill defeated in the primary. What did you make of our discussion and who might have the edge in this race? Well, I would think that um, they should because she's running as a Democrat in that district. But I was very impressed with Reginald Jackson uh, running as an independent, I think is always much more difficult to win. But um, I guess it will depend on what kind of ground game they've had and how, who, who they've been uh, knocking, if they've been knocking on doors and what they're doing to, to win the race. It's always about turnout, right? Um, and it looks like we're going to have a very good early turnout in, in both primaries. Republicans, uh, last time I checked, had about 20,000. The Democrats had a little over 10,000. Uh, my guess is there won't be a lot of people voting on August 6th. Don, your take on turnout, and then I'll move to another issue, but following up on uh, Susan's points there. Well, I think uh, turnout actually on voting day is going to be a little bit lower than we're used to because, of course, the advent of absentee balloting and, and with the COVID pandemic. Um, so we might be a little surprised at the percentage difference. I still think it'll be fairly high. We have a very active Senate race, some very important local races that'll be final. Uh, the, the national races, of course, Senate and House are, are primaries, but um, uh, voter turnout is improving. It's still abysmal, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the fact that we can't get to 50 and 60 and 70% turnouts uh, just bothers me, but uh, it is improving as a community and I'm at least encouraged by that. Don, something else that bothered you this week, one of the famous faces with the Trump administration's coronavirus task force, Dr. Burks was in Tennessee to talk to the state about what it could do to improve its fight against the virus. Um, but you don't think Governor Lee is listening? Well, if he's listening, he's certainly not following. Um, he's made uh, the decision not to follow most or any of the recommendations from CDC and Dr. Burks. Um, these are skilled science people that are not based in politics. And I understand there are other concerns other than science and politics, but we're talking about life and death in some cases, and certainly serious prolonged illnesses with effects that we don't know uh, how long they may last if someone contracts this virus and, and has to live with it. Uh, I'm really troubled. You look to the North and Governor Bashir in Kentucky followed their recommendations or trying to get a hold of it. We're in the top 10 worst states in the country now uh, in, in rise. We even see in Knoxville, we went in a month from five deaths overall to I think we're in the mid thirties now in just one month. And this is going to get worse. I'm concerned about schools ultimately having to close all the way back down and go completely online. I just don't think that we're moving forward at the right pace in the right way. And Governor Lee is not helping this problem. Susan, uh, we will let you have the last word <laughs> next week as we Thank break you. down the election. We appreciate Thanks, you watching Don. and hope to see you after August 6th, right here on Inside Tennessee.